So this is not a video that I was expecting to make right now. Uh, a couple days ago, I made a video about what I consider the best way to set up a Raspberry Pi. Uh, you can find it below. Um, it's the way I've been doing it for years. It's, it's the, by far was the easiest way. The very next day after I published my video, Raspberry Pi dropped a whole bunch of new software that essentially focused on the very problems that I was trying to solve with my video. Uh, they basically rolled out a way of doing it all within uh, their, their image writing software, all in the graphical user interface. It's way easy, way straightforward, and essentially invalidates the entire video uh, that I just published. So I'm gonna salvage a few things from that video that you can, uh, that, that still works. And then I'm gonna film a couple more and we'll go over what Raspberry Pi changed and just how much easier now it is to set up a Raspberry Pi and in the way that I was talking about. Um, so let's go get into it. Okay, so this time around, you don't need to download any files because Raspberry Pi has been able to work everything into their, their GUI. So it makes everything way easier. But you do want to go to the link in the description and go to their site for their image writer. And that's the only package you need to download. So download that, start it up, and then uh, come back here. Okay, so now that you have the Raspberry Pi imager installed, the first thing you want to do is you want to take your micro SD card, plug it into your card reader, and then plug that into the computer. Now, if it's not a fresh card, what you want to do is right click on that drive and format it before we do anything else. <laughs> All right, so now that you have the new Raspberry Pi imager open, I'm gonna walk you through how to set up Wi-Fi, how to write the operating system to it, and how to enable something called SSH. So the first thing you wanna do is, um, is click Control Shift X. And what this does is that brings up a hidden advanced settings menu. Um, so going through here, you wanna be sure that you've selected set host name. So host name is essentially um, what your router sees. So if you were to go into a list of devices connected to your router, you would see, in this case, Raspberry Pi. Uh, if you have multiple Raspberry Pis floating around, you're gonna wanna make sure your host name is different from each one. So you could do like Raspberry Pi 1, 2, or you know, whatever you want. Um, the next thing you wanna do is enable SSH. So SSH is a protocol that basically allows you to, uh, to connect to computers from another computer. So I can basically send commands to the Raspberry Pi that say to update or install the software package, do whatever I want to basically set up my Raspberry Pi for whatever application that I want to do. Um, so in this case, we're, we're telling it to enable SSH from default. This is a really nice new feature because they were worried about security, so they started not enabling SSH from by default. Um, so it was a real big pain to have to, to have to enable it, but now you can just say, you know, you've got my permission to go ahead and do it. Um, you want to use password, password authentication, and this is essentially the password that it's going to ask you for when you try to establish a connection. Um, I like to use the default password from the Raspberry Pi just because my, my stuff isn't really, really sensitive. So they just use the word Raspberry. Um, but you can change this to whatever you want to and make it, make it more secure. You want to make sure that configure Wi-Fi is turned on. Um, you're going to type in your SSID, which is just your Wi-Fi name. So mine is Mad Science too, and then you just type in your Wi-Fi password. Um, you also want to have your uh, your country code, so you can look up online what your two-digit country code is for where you are. Um, going through here, we're going to have to go to the U.S. and this menu um, is kind of funky. And you kind of got, got to go through for the U.S. You got to go through a bunch of bunch of names here. So bear with me for a second. Yeah, I think they really need to, to get a better menu here. This is kind of a pain. Um, but if you don't know your code, you just you just go to, to Google and type in what is my two-digit country code. All right, U.S. Um, and that, that basically is just telling the hardware what frequency to use for Wi-Fi, and it, it's geographically uh, configured. Um, so we set all that. Okay, now you click Save, and that's it. 
Uh, now you want to click the operating system and it's going to give you a whole list here of operating systems. So you've got just the regular multi-purpose um, Raspberry Pi OS and this basically is just um, just a blank OS that you can download whatever packages you want or set it up however you want. You can go down here and there's other ones like Kodi which is pretty cool. It's like a, uh, a media player so you can make like your own Apple TV or Roku kind of thing. Uh, there's an emulation and game OS, which is to, like to, to run old fashioned arcade games and build, basically build your own gaming console. So there's a lot of neat things here. Um, if you click this button here, it says Raspberry Pi OS Other. It gives you two really cool features. So the full version has like the full desktop environment. It's, it's basically a, a small computer. Um, you can sit down and surf the internet and full mouse control, all of that. Uh, Raspberry Pi OS Lite is a really stripped down version. So if you're like using one of the smaller Raspberry Pis, like a, like a Zero W, or you're, you're trying to really get a lot of power out of your Raspberry Pi, and you're trying not to like use all the system resources, uh, Raspberry Pi Lite's really cool. The only problem is, is it's stripped down, so you, you will have to download any, any packages and things that you wanna have on the Raspberry Pi. Um, but this is the one I end up using the most, so that's what I'm gonna go with. Um, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to click stored. So this is my uh, SD card that I plugged in earlier. And then I'm just going to click write. And then I'm going to say, yes, I want to continue. Uh, now this is going to take a little while. So there's, there's really no need to, uh, to continue watching this. Um, you can just, we will just going to flip to the next, next, uh, next step here. All right. So now that that's done, um, go ahead and eject the SD card and you can plug it into your Raspberry Pi and let the Raspberry Pi completely boot up. Uh, when that's finished, um, come back to the video. Okay, so now that we have a booted up Raspberry Pi, it should have went ahead and automatically connected to your wireless network. Um, so now we want to start a command prompt, establish an SSH connection, so connect to the Raspberry Pi, um, and then it'll allow us to start sending code. Um, so what you want to do is you want to go to search and you want to type in CMD and then open command prompt. This is just essentially a command window. And then what we're going to want to do is establish an SSH connection that's done by just typing SSH space. And now you type the username. So by default, it's uh, pi on the Raspberry Pi. So I type pi and then you say at, and then it wants the host name. So I use the default host name of Raspberry Pi. Uh, but if you change the host name, then that's what you want to enter here. So Raspberry Pi is what I use. Um, so that reads SSH, meaning I want to start an SSH connection, um, Pi, which is the username for the Pi, at Raspberry Pi, and then I press enter. So now it's going to ask for the password. I just use the default password Raspberry. If you typed in a different one, then, then you want to use that password. Um, but I'm going to type that in now, Raspberry. So that Pi at Raspberry Pi, that blue and green prompt there, is on the actual Raspberry Pi. So that means I have fully connected to the Raspberry Pi, and now I can send the Raspberry Pi um, updates. Um, so I can send code like this. Um, and that's essentially uh, telling the Raspberry Pi to go on the internet the repositories and see if it needs to update and then download the updates. Um, so you can update it, you can upgrade it, you can install new software packages, you can create directories, anything you want to, uh, to set up the Raspberry Pi for your project can be done from this prompt. Um, so that's it. It's, it's super simple now that they, that they finally got the GUI thing together. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to put them in the, uh, in the comments. I don't, I don't mind helping out at all. Um, thanks for taking a look. Here we go.